This is Seven National News and in our top story, His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Kazmi, the UAE Supreme Council member and ruler of Sharjah, graced the opening of the two-day government communication forum, focusing on delivering a unified message through effective communication. In his video presentation, the ruler of Sharjah emphasized the key role of communication in ensuring the society's development and sustaining economic growth. This is at the heart of the annual event, which aims to promote a constant dialogue between governments and people. Among the high-profile dignitaries in attendance include Risa Tayyip Erdogan, the Prime Minister of Turkey, who called for communication and action, especially in light of the issues across the region. The former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan also spoke about how timely the event is and how communication has become even more critical to our development and existence. I think the meeting is very Citizens must believe that those who represent them share the same vision for the future and the same worries and frustrations. They must have confidence that laws and regulations will be applied fairly and consistently in such unrest in the future and in coming years and to build a healthy democracy, as I said earlier, based on the three pillars, peace and security, development, respect for rule of law and human rights. Through that government media center, we we're trying to prove that it's the perfect way of dealing with the, between government and media, and we'll try to uh, do the same with every other department uh, for the next three years. We're, we're trying to focus on having uh, a government communication unit in every single department. Following a successful inaugural event last year, the event's second year also spotlights the challenges and opportunities in the region, as well as access to information through the rise of social media. Experts say the UA is a shining example of the open dialogue and transparency that many in the region could learn from. Newspapers and uh, aren't just uh, in print anymore, they're online. And reporters uh, for TV, uh, as well as newspapers and magazines, uh, aren't just reporting. Uh, you're uh, in their uh, traditional outlets, you're also on Twitter and you're on Facebook. And so all of these things need to be taken together. Governments have to use them, the people have to use them, and it's an opportunity uh, to, to, seize, uh, to seize the momentum as uh, government and people can come together to make decisions. The delegation that is responsible for the World Expo arrived in the UAE from Paris today in order to conduct a four-day inquiry mission to assess the UAE's ability to host the World Expo 2020 in Dubai. The delegation representing the Bureau International des Expositions, the intergovernmental organization based in Paris, will discuss the vision behind the country's bid theme of connecting minds, creating the future, along with expected financial costs, worldwide promotion of the event, expected visitor numbers and the long-term use of the proposed expo site, Dubai Trade Center Jebel Ali. His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Said Al Maktoum in his capacity as the chairman of the Higher Committee for hosting the 2020 World Expo in Dubai said that it is with great pride that we look forward to the mission's discovery of our capabilities to not only host the event, but to make it the best expo in the event's 150-year history. The winner will be announced in November 2013, following a vote by the 163 member nations of the BIE. The UAE is stepping up its efforts with the European Union for visa-free travel for Emiratis to the Schengen states that cover 26 European countries. Sheikh Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Buti Al Ahmed, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, made the announcement, stating that the UA wishes to express its appreciation that its request to be included among the countries whose citizens do not require a visa to travel to the Schengen area is currently under serious consideration by the European Union. 
Officials added that the UAE visa-free access will further facilitate a trade relationship between the UAE and the Schengen area that currently stands at over 40 billion US dollars and would also send a positive signal for greater cultural openness towards the Arab and Muslim worlds. The Ministry of Health has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Absha in Initiative to provide employment opportunities for UAE nationals over the next five years. According to a statement, His Excellency Abdul Rahman al Awais, the Minister of Culture, Youth and Community Development and Acting Minister of Health, made the announcement stating that the Ministry will appoint 3,000 UAE nationals, ensure the training of the health sciences graduates, and employ them in the public and private sectors. He added that the agreement also provides facilities for UA nationals in the private labour market, as they are a main strategic partner in the country's development process. 60% of the, of the world's top 100 super yachts are owned by Middle Eastern clientele, which highlights the high demand for luxury marine boats in the region. Next week in Dubai, there will be over 430 crafts showcased, valued at over 1 billion dirhams as a part of the annual Dubai International Boat Show. Running for its 21st consecutive edition, the event is scheduled to take place from the 5th to the 9th of March. March at the Dubai International Marine Club, Mina Siyahi. Industry leaders from all corners of the globe will debut 30 global and regional launches to the thousands of expected visitors and buyers alike. With the regional marine industry showing signs of growth, a dedicated UA pavilion will be set up for the five-day event, titled Made in UAE. The platform will host the country's top up-and-coming boat builders, as well as demonstrate the growing extent of the Emirates' nautical manufacturing ability. Sponsored by the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the pavilion aims to promote the growth of the country's small to medium-sized enterprises in the boat building industry. This year's show is set to demonstrate that consumer confidence has returned. On the back of the 10% growth, we've already seen in the luxury goods market between 2011 and 2012. At the heart of the Middle East, North Africa and South Asia, Dubai has long been a focus for the marine tourism and lifestyle industry. It's a growing industry and although we are in the business here for 30, 31 years and the boat show is here for 21 years, it is still not a mature industry. It is a very fast growing industry at the moment in terms of its infrastructure developments. So we're creating destinations all around us at the moment and that creates by itself demand for boats and the rest will follow actually once there is a larger boat park it becomes more natural to to have great service companies that are established here to to provide with the after sale service that's required to maintain um, from leisure boats up to super yachts. Meanwhile, event organizers stated that consumers are looking more positively towards domestic products that are often more competitively priced and offer greater levels of customization for buyers rather than opting for an imported vessel. UAE has a great impetus to promote entrepreneurship and of course um, boat building is a big part of, uh, of uh, the economic driver as well. Uh, if you look at the likes of Gulfcraft, Al Shali and IMG, they are the trailblazers and the pioneers in the industry here. So this is where Dubai Boat Show presents a, uh, an excellent platform and we work very closely with Dubai Chamber of Commerce to give an opportunity to, to aspiring and uh, up and coming uh, UAE boat builders an opportunity to showcase their products to the rest of the world. And finally, looking to other news, a group of UAE scientists have discovered that manuka honey may help fight cancer, according to recent reports. According to a local daily, a five-year study conducted by the UAE University shows that the honey, which is derived from pollen collected by bees from the manuka tree in New Zealand, inhibits the growth of a variety of cancerous cells, including breast, skin and colon cancers. It added that manuka honey may also reduce the side effects of chemotherapy. 
The findings came when the team gradually exposed three different types of cancerous mouse cells to small amounts of Manuka honey and found that the growth of the tumours came to a standstill.